Good afternoon. My name is Judy Devine, and I'm Sadlier's Religion Webinar Coordinator and the moderator for this afternoon's webinar with Sister Janet Scheffler. Sister Janet is a facilitator of Days of Reflections, Parish Missions, Workshops, Presentations, author, and university teacher and facilitator of online classes for the University of Dayton and Boston College. She continues the ministry she was involved in for many years in parishes and as former director of adult faith formation for the Archdiocese of Detroit. Today she is here to speak about growing in faith. It's not for children only. Before we get started, a few housekeeping notes. Everyone is on mute to minimize the background noise. If you have questions, please type them in the question box. We are recording the presentation and we'll do our best as long as technology cooperates to get this up for you to view again and share with your colleagues. Those of you live with us today online and who stay for the entire webinar will receive a certificate of participation by the end of the week. It is sent to the email you used to register, so make sure you do not block emails from Sadlier. If you are listening to the recorded webinar, we're sorry, but we cannot send a certificate for attendance. I mention that because I know it is sometimes shared with your colleagues afterwards. Uh, during the webinar, Sister will also be answering questions, so we'll pause to do that. Now, without further ado, I am going to turn this over to Sister Janet, who will present Growing in Faith, It's Not for Children Only. Thank you, Sister. It's all yours. Thanks, Judy. And thanks, everybody, for being here. I'm sure that you have 436 more things to do before you go to bed tonight. So it's a real testament to your faith and your ministry um, to set aside this time. As Judy said, we're going to explore today um, some ways to invite and include and engage and inspire parents, um, not just with their children, but their own faith growth. So if, as we begin this, um, let's begin in prayer. Nurturing God, you watch over us with the cherishing care of a parent. Continue to bless all parents, supporting them with strength in their vocation. When they are worried, assure them of your presence. When they doubt, encourage them. When they feel overwhelmed, surround them with peace. Strengthen in them dedication, enthusiasm, and deep love. We pray in the name of your Son, our brother, Jesus. Amen. So let's begin with a few foundational principles things that I think are important to remember before we look at some specific approaches and activities and methods. The first one is, is to always remember that our ministry is always to the whole family. Even though we think we might just have children and youth sitting with us, um, we influence not just them, but their whole family. And so everything that we do, we need to keep that in mind. How can we enhance that? How can even the little things we do with the children spill over into the family? Another principle is parents, just like all of us, um, learn in all kinds of ways, not just when they're in a class situation or a workshop session. It's like, for instance, when, when children have homework, and I don't like that term homework for religious ed, but that's another issue. Um, so, w But when the children have something to do after the sessions, after school, and the parents are invited to be involved in it, the parents are hopefully learning. In various ways, they're deepening and tapping into their own faith. So even though it might seem to be something for children, it's having an impact on them. So that's one example. Because I think a lot of times we put information for adults in a box, and we think it's only one thing. It's only when they come to a, to a meeting or a workshop. But formation and faith can happen in all kinds of ways. In fact, there was a recent study by the Search Institute 
in the YMCA that found that many parents prefer informal support from parishes and from community organizations rather than just structured programs. Some of the things they said that they wanted was um, advice from teachers, from religious leaders, from other professionals like doctors. They wanted to be able to talk with other parents about parenting issues, about being what it means to be a Catholic family today. And they want other people to tell them that they're doing a good job. So that's the informal support that they said they wanted. When we think of that, we might think then that we could abandon any structured programs because of that. But the, but the reality is a lot of other people in that same survey said they also benefit from those kind of programs. So it's, it's what's true about our faith and all kinds of things. It's a both and. They need those informal supports, but they also need other formal structured ways to continue learning. So the questions I think for us are, how do we provide the informal support to parents, such as advice from those who work with teens and children? How do we provide times for parents to talk to one another? A second, what type of structured programs are we providing? And third, which I think too is crucial for us to look at, are there ways we can develop support for parents and presence to them at the places where they're already engaged with their children, in sports, in drama, dance classes, other school activities? Okay? And one of the questions I think that we could always ask about everything that we do is, in this activity, guideline, communication from us, this approach, this program, what will our parents learn because of it? Because everything that we do teaches. So an examination of conscience for us to always ask is, whenever we're doing anything, how might this affect their view of church, their view of God, their view of the sacraments? their understanding of prayer, their relationship with Jesus. So a third principle is it's not just keeping parents involved in their children's faith formation, as important as that is, but the question is how are we nurturing their faith? How are we treating them as adults, not only as parents, the parental role is crucial, and we need to help them and support them and walk with them in that. But they have other roles in life, too. And so how are we treating them, not just as parents, but as adults? And another principle, which I think goes back to the survey that we just talked about, is always praise them. Be positive and affirming in everything that we do showing respect for who they are and all the good things, telling them about all the good things that they're already doing. I think a lot of times our culture doesn't support parents. Our, our culture is constantly telling them what they're doing wrong and how they can do it better. And even though they want help in new things to do, we need to help them to see all the good things they're already doing. We want um, as religious leaders and catechists and school teachers, we want to help them to keep on learning. But positive affirmation about what they're already doing is one of the best ways to motivate them to do that. So we need, in praising them, to remind them that holiness is already within their family life. So help parents see how they catechize. How, how they're already doing it in their everyday family life. When we say that they're the first catechist, it doesn't mean they have to set up a mini classroom at home. They, they teach, they catechize by the way they live, a forgiving and caring life as a family. 
they catechize by the way they recognize and celebrate God in their midst, in the ordinariness of their everyday life, in the love that happens through all the difficult times, in the sharing of the meals, in the way they reach out to others. I really believe that our role is not to bring God to families because God is already there. Our role is to help them become more aware of how much God is there, of how close God is, of the many ways that God is with them 24-7. So those were just four principles that I, for me, undergird our ministry with adults and with parents. So let's look at some ideas in three different categories. First of all, parents with their children, and then parents themselves. And third, some virtual ideas. Um, and in reality, that third category overlaps with the first two. But, but I'd like to treat that separately, because sometimes we don't think of the ways we can do that, the ways we can connect and help them and encourage them. Um, um, technologically, in addition to face-to-face. -face. So first of all, um, parents with children. One idea might be shared prayer. So at the beginning of the year, and we're still in the beginning, October is still the beginning, designate one of the class sessions for each grade level as shared prayer with their families. So invite the parents to join with their child in the last 40 minutes of the session, the last 40 minutes of the religion session within the school setting for a prayer time, um, followed by refreshments. And if the parents haven't had a chance to meet the catechist, to meet the teacher yet, that would be a time to do that. But offer a prayer service where it's not just for the children and the parents are watching, but everybody's involved. And involve them in some kind of a ritual, that a simple ritual, that they can continue to do at home, such as blessing one another, parents blessing their children, children blessing their parents. Another idea, a second idea, is invite parents to be guest catechists, to be guest teachers within the religion setting. Get to know the interests, the skills, the talents of the parents in your school, in your class, in your faith formation session. A lot of times they have interest, skills, service in the world, or parish involvement that's directly related to the themes that are being studied by the children and youth. So invite them to be part of one of the sessions maybe as a one-time catechist, or even as a permanent helper. I've experienced it over and over again, and I'm sure you've ha you have, that we learn best what we teach. And so if we invite parents to help teach a given topic, they're going to learn that even better, what that means in their faith life. A third idea, and you're probably doing these things already, so it's just a reminder of how, what great things you're doing. Most families, I really believe, want to pray together, want to develop rituals, want to share their faith together, but sometimes they don't know where to start or they're, they're desirous of new things to do. And so share with them lots of different ideas. Sometimes the ideas might be related to what the children, what the youth are studying. Sometimes they might be related to the liturgical year. Sometimes to the everyday occurrences within family life. For instance, when, if you're thinking about the liturgical year, you might give them ideas to celebrate the 12 days of Christmas. There's an article on my website that gives um, ideas for each of the 12 days of Christmas. After, the, the, after this webinar, when you get an email from Sadlier that has a thank you or your certificate, they're going to include with that a handout. And the handout 
is going to give you all the websites, uh, the URLs for all the websites, because I'm going to mention several more as we go on. Um, so if you're interested in some of these resources, how to get them um, will come to you um, in a couple days. Okay. Another thing to do would be to give them ideas for events that occur throughout the year that they're already going to be aware of or that they should be aware of. So for instance, Valentine's Day, St. Nicholas Day, Earth Day, um, International Peace Day, which we just celebrated a couple of weeks ago, and the list could go on and on. And again, there's a, a chart on my website which lists a lot of these events that happen in our everyday culture which we can in incorporate and give families ideas of things to do at home. Another idea for home ideas that you might want to look at, and again, this is on the website, I do a, a monthly newsletter on adult faith formation. And this one from um, a year or so ago was a parish that did a practice. They, they invited every family, in the, every home in the parish to pause, and they chose Wednesday of Holy Week to pause for prayer at home. And so it wasn't asking them to come to the parish. It was asking them to stop at home and pray together. And they, they gave them um, ideas of what to do. They gave them ways to get ready for it. They gave them suggestions of prayers to say um, together, ways to, to do faith sharing together at home. So could that be something that we could do? And maybe the whole parish wouldn't do it. Maybe you couldn't convince them to do that. But maybe your school community could do it. Or your re religious education um, community could do it. And, it. and and it might be at different times. It just doesn't have to be Wednesday of Holy Week. That's what this parish tried. So a fourth idea is homework for parents. My suggestion is to make the homework for the children something that the parents need to be involved in. And again, as we said at the beginning, their involvement leads to new learnings, hopefully, for themselves. So for instance, when the session is on prayer, can the children interview their parents, such as asking them, when do you pray? Who do you pray to? Why, mom and dad, do you pray? A lot of times it's the parents asking their children, what did you do today in religion class? But parents, when they need to put their own experiences and beliefs into words for their children, hopefully deepens that for themselves. Another idea would be that periodically families could be asked to watch a TV program, a specific one, or one of their own choosing. And we could give them a list of questions to help them analyze the program or the commercials according to gospel values, according to Jesus' lifestyle, or a specific theme that you're studying, like truthfulness, honesty, um, and, and look for that in that program. Give parents suggestions for things to talk about with their children. How do you think God feels about war? What do you think God looks like? Where would Jesus sit if he came to eat lunch at your school? When have you felt close to God last week? What one question would you love to ask God right now? So to suggest simple things like that to help parents start conversations with their children. And help parents have discussions on provocative issues, controversial topics. With that suggestion, of course, you can't just make that suggestion to parents. We need to provide help, simple resources to help them initiate that and to have those kind of conversations at home. So we could provide a simple sheet that include fa includes facts about a particular topic that might be in the news. 
as well as suggestions for how to talk about that topic with young children, with older children. If we did a sheet like this, it could in include the simple facts about the topic, but it should also include a scripture reference or a doctrinal statement that offers a faith perspective on that topic, on what's happening in our world today. And so parents then can use that with, with individual children or with their whole family at mealtime or in the car, at bedtime, whatever works for their family. So as we look at sacramental catechesis, um, what about when we're preparing for sacraments, what about scheduling family days rather than parent meetings? So, not to provide time for children without incorporating times for adults at the same time. And then, after children have had their sessions, parents have had their sessions, provide time for the family to come together to share and reflect on, on what each of them experienced in their own peer groupings. In one sense, the whole family is the candidate for the sacrament. Our theology reminds us that sacraments affect the whole community, not just the individual who's celebrating it for the first time. And that's especially true for the immediate family of that child who's preparing to celebrate. Bring everyone together to learn. A lot of things in our culture today seem to separate families into their own age groups for different events, different functions. So several times a year, host an intergenerational learning festival. And there's lots of ways to structure something like that. One of the ways would be through learning centers. So to have various centers set up throughout the parish area, throughout the school area, each one hosting a different activity related to the theme that, that you're exploring that night. So it might be for Advent, it might be about sacraments, it might be about care for creation, uh, it could be about our call to service. The ideal, too, is that that learning center doesn't end there, but it leads to something that they can continue to do at home that they can incorporate into their own family life. Another um, related idea to this would be family events. The past one that we talked about, which were, was intergenerational, could be everybody, everybody in the parish. Adults could come even if they didn't have children. Then also think about specific family events, such as a movie night using religious movies, of course, but also using everyday movies from the culture and helping them to see the values, the gospel values that are in that movie, to help them to recognize God in that movie, maybe in ways they never saw before. There's some more ideas, again, this is on your, web, on your handout that you'll have, in this um, newsletter that I did. Some of the ideas that are in here are, they were movie nights just for adults, but many of them also were movie nights that parishes, schools, religious ed programs planned for families together. Also, service. I would suggest that we very seldom engage, only engage children in service. We need to do things where parents and children are, do, are serving together. If what we do is only children engaged in service, what message are we giving them? Are we telling them, not in words, but in that action, that service is something we do because we're in school, or service is something we do because we're in religious ed, or service is something we do to get a sacrament? That's the total opposite of what service is in our Christian life. So children and adults 
together in service, children and parents together in service. And of course, that experience of serving is enhanced when we prepare for it, when we help them to learn about why we're doing it, what they're going to encounter, as well as reflection afterward. Because I did this, what did I learn about myself? Where did I find God in this? And one more idea for parents and children together is reflection booklets. Publish your own reflection booklet for Advent and Christmas or for Lent and Easter with short reflections and things to do for each day of the season. Invite different families from your school or from your parish, from your class, to write a reflection and an activity for each day. They can be based on the scripture readings of the day or the feast of the day. And again, in doing that, think of everything that children would learn but also that adults would learn, tapping into their own faith and, and, and pulling it out to make it more alive for themselves so they could share it with someone else. So let's pause for a moment. What's worked for you to help adults deepen their faith in opportunities with their children? And what new things might you try? So if you have an idea, if you'd type it in, and as soon as we have a few, um, Judy will share a couple of them with us. As soon as I get some, I will gladly do that. OK. You can type them into the question box. One of the things, points that you made, um, Sister Janet, that I found uh, really made me stop and think was um, how are we treating them? Are we treating them as adults? All right, here we go. A couple coming up. I, we're getting lots now, so let me. <laughs> Good. Good. Okay. I work in a parish that excels at families doing service. What we are finding is a disconnect with service and ongoing formation, both for children and adults. Are there any ideas or suggestions to better encourage ongoing formation in addition to service? Okay. All right. So I, if I'm understanding correctly, so there's a the service. They excel at the doing the service, but service. there seems to be a disconnect with service and ongoing formation. I think one of the things, a lot of us, I think there's a lot of good things going on in service. I think what we don't do enough is, uh, what I alluded to a couple of minutes ago, is when the service is over, help people to reflect on the service itself. Um, give them questions to talk about at home, um, for children to talk about in their sessions hopefully for a gathering of parents to talk about it after the service, sometimes families together to talk about. So things like um, what happened in that service activity, even if it was something simple. Um, what happened to me? Did I learn something new about myself? Did I learn something new about my relationships with other people? Where did I find God there? What what's going to what has changed in me? How will I be different in the weeks ahead because of what I did? And relate what happened there also to gospel stories of Jesus reaching out and what Jesus taught us. So I think the faith formation can be built into the service, both before it and after it. Okay, I have some suggestions that people have used, so I'll share them with you. Sacramental prep is a super great thing to share with parents, hosting a grandparents' day, singing songs with the children. 
Another, we do learning centers for families for the sacraments of reconciliation and Eucharist. Uh, sacramental retreats where parents and children attend centers together. Discussion questions for sacraments with children. Including parents through, and this is in quotes, homework, has worked for me and I'm a high school teacher. Mm. I give the confirmation students topics to discuss with their sponsors. Uh, we did a family service night for our, uh, for our theme, We Are Called to Serve, Micah 6-8, with uh, stations that work for preschool through teens, included services for homeless pets. The whole thing was well received and attended by hundreds. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. I have done a flipped classroom where students have watched a video on Advent, Lent, Year of Mercy. Students would then make questions for their parents to answer after the parents watched the video, giving them a quiz and hopefully discussing what they watched. Fantastic. Uh, wow, we have a lot here. Read the nativity story before Christmas dinner. Take a picture of the nativity set under the family Christmas tree and send it to DRE for social media. Hmm. Here's one. I'd be interested in trying an intergenerational event. Oh, good. Uh, you know, liturgical All Saints Advent. Yeah. I work in a, oh, here you are. I work in a parish where it is like pulling teeth to get parents to participate in anything. Do you have any suggestions? Um, you know what, I think, um, can we hold that to the next one? There might, it might come out, some ideas might come out in our next section. Sure, okay. okay. And I can go back to that one if we forget. <clears throat> we are meeting with parents of our children at the same time while the children are in faith formation on Sunday mornings and studying the Sunday readings. This is our third year of doing this, and we are looking for new ideas. Might that come up in the next session also, Sister? Um, I, it could be. Okay. In one of the next two, yeah. Let's All right. We have uh, parents come to a retreat for First Communion with the children. Uh, this is also where the hosts are made. The parents learn through helping the children with day's activities. Included reflection question sheets for families to discuss and take with them. Um, when I was in a Catholic school environment, I always had luck with assigning homework that had to be done with parents. I thought it was tremendously successful and the class discussions after the assignments were valuable. Now that I am a DRE, it is not as easy to get my parents to follow through in my PSR program. Okay. So, and then, oh, a couple more here. Um, I worry that my parents, whoops, sorry, my cursor here. I worry that my parents will give weak replies when interviewed. That is, going to Mass every week isn't important, or I don't regularly pray. Is it better to get 20 kids the help of parents if 10 others don't support the message? I think, yes, I think so. Um, okay. We could say more about that, but why don't we, we'll come, we can come back to that. Okay. We had a question and answer night with our priests and visiting sisters on why they became a priest or sister. Oh, that's interesting, too. Created for the domestic church column in our weekly bulletin with prayers, ideas, and things to do at home. Great. That's a good one. Sending home that. QR codes for a tour of our church and then hosting a scavenger hunt in our church for the items learned about. Great. We also have parents attend sacramental formation retreats with their children. Uh, confirmation. We have confirmation students serve the Mass once a month and then encourage parents to stay with students in the church for the lesson in the remaining half hour class time. And we started a program stepping forward in faith for parents on the same night as the children. They are discussing what they would like to share with each other and their children. If any sh parents show, it is a plus. This, uh, this way we have the parents there for prayer and questions uh, they can answer for their children like they do like they remember the day they made their prepared First Communion, a Seder meal for parish, they do. We have um, fun to have them prepare and learn at the same time. Uh, okay. All parents are reading the new, wow, lots of, sister, this is quite a lot here. Okay, well, All parents are reading the new St. Joseph's Baltimore Catechism and our priest is discussing a lesson each week. Recruiting parents to help in vacation Bible school. 
making parent meetings catechetical, having right, parents serve lunch concept. at our confirmation sessions. That right. way they see and Judy, learn. Judy, why don't we, can we hold some of those? That's it. That was the last one. Oh, okay, great, good. Thank you so much. Thanks, You're everybody. welcome. Back Thanks to you. Everybody. Okay. And those are those were terrific, and some of them I think we're going to continue to talk about. So hopefully they'll spur more ideas too. So let's look at some things um, for parents themselves. And first of all, I think, and it certainly is obvious that you've already you're already doing this, but I think we need to get to know our parents, our families in every way that we can. Um, and some ways to do that. Um, one way is, and this is going to sound. Um, um, very time consuming. So um, just think about if it's possible. Is to visit your families. That's going to take time, but the benefits are are unreal. Um, one of the parishes I ministered at for several years, during the summer, I spent practically my whole summer um, visiting the families of the First Communion the First Communion families. And we had at that time probably about 150 um, in the First Communion um, program. But let the parents know if you're coming. Let them know why you're coming. Um, perhaps it's because there's a new family opportunity that you're going to be offering that you want them to know about. But then also it's a time to ask them how things are for them to ask what they need from the parish, from the school, from the catechetical program. And most of all, spend a few minutes of time um, praying with them in a simple family way, modeling how every family can do that. I think the one question was about the parents don't come to things. Um, I think we're, we always expect parents to come to us. I think going to them on their own turf um, says a great deal. And that, that might also change for some people then their desire to come to the parish for things that we offer. Okay? Another way, too, to get to know them, I know one parish that does what they call five and five. And the pastoral council, parish pastoral council members help with this so that there's enough people doing it. What they do is that, um, this is for religious education, that every family was asked to come register for the coming year of religious ed. Could also do the same thing for, for school. And in addition to completing the registration, they were asked five questions in five minutes. And the five questions were, what's the best thing you experience in religious formation for your children? What do you wish we would consider? Third question was, and this is specifically for religious ed, is the time that our session is offered the best for your family? Fourth, what questions do you have for us? And fifth, what do you most need to grow in your relationship with Jesus? So the more we get to know them, of course, we're reminded of something that we already know, that not all parents, not all families are the same. There's blended families, single parents, married parents, divorced parents, divorced and remarried parents, never married parents, minority parents, wealthy parents, poor parents, grandparents, godparents. So of course, the different kinds of families call for different kinds of support for the parents. So what types of parent support programs do you offer? What kinds of families are those programs directed to? Just one kind of family? And, and we don't have to do everything. How do we partner with community organizations to provide parent education, support, services? How do we as a school community or a religious ed community, let parents know of other opportunities in the community that would benefit them, that would support them. Another thing for parents themselves is 
for us to remember to communicate always. And one question to ask ourselves is what methods do we use to communicate? And usually we know we need to use more than one method because not every method reaches everybody. And also, those, for those of us in parish ministry, do we communicate re regularly with parents between baptism and entry into the religious ed process? Or do we leave them alone for five or six years? Parent meetings came up before. Um, and I think what I'm going to say, it, it's probably already been mentioned, but just to reiterate it. There's an adult learning principle that reminds us that, that we need to acknowledge the human experience of each participant, not to presume um, that they don't, have an, they don't have experiences on which to build their faith on. A corollary of that, I think, is that if someone in the group can tell the group something at this parent meeting, it's best for them to do it instead of us who are the catechetical or school leaders. So for instance, what about a panel of parents whose children celebrated the sacrament last year? The parents, I think, expect us, those in authority or those in ministry, um, to tell them the things that they should be doing or things that work in families. But at times, they might turn us off because what they think is, well, that's your job. You're not really like them. You're not really like me and my family. You're you know, one of those who are involved in the church, and I'm not. But when they hear it from other parents, might that not make more sense? I have another idea about sacramental prep, but I'll, that comes in our third section. So a fourth way to to think just about um, responding to parents is to help parents connect. That came out in the survey that I mentioned in the beginning from the Search Institute. You know, there used to be front porches, and Catholic parents often used, often lived next door to one another. So there was a real support system because the Catholic atmosphere was everywhere. That's not always true today. And so can we be the catalyst to provide times and places for parents to be together to have conversations about parenting, about family spirituality? Can we organize a coffee night for parents? Or a morning tea for moms or dads who are home? Can we do gathering specific, specific groups, parents of young children, parents of teens? And those can happen online also, which we'll talk about in our next section, too. One natural time which came up in, in the things you've already shared with us is that when children are in their catechetical sessions instead of setting out in their cars. Um, and I know many places have tried that, and some of them say it doesn't work. A couple of things that might help. Um, don't plan it yourself get a group of interested parents to plan it, get a group of parents to advertise it. Be sure that it meets their needs, their concerns. We might want to do a session while their kids are in class about today's theology of the sacraments or the meaning of the creed, but they might not be there. Do they need something on time management? on managing stress? Do they need something on sibling rivalry, on single parenting? If we start with those things, the things that, that they want to talk about, in time, they'll hopefully, they'll be more eager to come to other things that we offer. And so the question that was asked before about, I want to do things, but my parents won't. Um, aren't involved. Can we find out what their needs are, respond to them? Can we get parents, some parents who are interested, to do the planning and organizing and invite parents? And hopefully that'll happen. I just had another thought too. Um, 
we talked about before about family nights with movies. During these times with parents, why not show portions of movies and then help them to see how they can use the movie or the TV show at home and talk about choices, talk about values, talk about Christian living in today's world. You might also want to check um, this um, issue. It gives an idea for a do-it-yourself time of reflection, which you could easily set up for a time when the parents um, are waiting for their children. It was a, a, an activity that a parish in Arizona did a few years ago, and it, it was just wonderful. The, it, and you wouldn't have to plan it because it's all here. Everything that you need and all the handouts are on the website. On my web website, you can get them. Um, but it would, it's a way of parents exploring um, different parts of the church building and the different things that happen during Mass. But they do it on their own. Another approach um, is a lot of times we offer um, programs for children and invite parents to stay while the children's are, children are in sessions. What about flipping that? What about offering things for parents and then saying, well, while that's going on, this is going to be happening for the children? and make the children's thing so enticing that the children will want to come. But it's really predominantly, I think, an activity, a, a session for parents. So hopefully the children will get them there. OK? So let's take um, a moment. What's worked for you as you walk with parents on their faith journey? Not this time, not specifically children and parents together, but are some things? Are there some things you've done just for the parents for their faith journey? So, if you, if any of those ideas come to your mind, if you type those in, and we'll look at a few of those, and then we'll move on to a third section. Uh, Janet, just two things that were typed while you were speaking that time. Um, should we be requiring rather than encouraging parents to participate? Why are they having their children catechized if it is of no value to them? And as she followed up with a comment, I don't mean to be judgmental. It's just so frustrating sometimes. Oh, I understand that. I understand that. Um, okay, let's talk about that a second. I understand that that because I've, I've felt that way a lot of times too. I think, though, that we're challenged to to not be judgmental because I'm always afraid, this is just for me, that if that's what I'm thinking, that somehow it's going to come out. Um, and I don't want parents to think that. You know, um, I remember, too, I called a parent once because they hadn't come to a sacramental parent meeting. Well, the reason they hadn't come was um, one parent was working three jobs. They were also taking care of both sets of parents, four elderly parents um, who were sick in the hospital. Well, no wonder they couldn't come. But my, my presumption always is, well, they didn't come because they don't hold it as a value. And, and certainly there are going to be people that do that. Um, but I think we need to give them the benefit of the doubt um, and be affirming and supportive of them. Um, what was the first question, Judy? No, that was no. Oh, just the, that was it. Yes. It, no, the other part. Was about the requiring, uh, requiring versus encouraging. Um, I that know first part of that. Right. I know that some places. In fact, I worked at a place, ministered at a, at a parish years ago, where the pastor did that. And it wasn't religious; really that it was school. It said that um, the parents had to come to three adult things that we were offering throughout the year. That they had to. It was a requirement. Um, I, I really believe in that. I think when you require something, especially of adults today, they're going to they're gonna balk. I think we need to work at determining what their needs are and what will help them and offering things that will help them and making, them, making it worthwhile for their time and encouraging them to come. And hopefully, if it's, if it's helpful for them, it will grow. 
and it will spread to the people who weren't there. Okay. Um, how can we, and in quotes, walk with parents when we cannot even get parents to register or bring their children slash youth to catechetical classes? Um, I, think, I think you just keep doing it. I think you just keep being welcoming, hospitable, affirming, um, reaching out, trying to meet their needs. Also realizing, though, you're not going to meet everybody. Everybody's not going to respond. Um, and so don't, don't beat yourself up or say, and or say, well, we're not going to do it or offer anything because they all don't come. Everybody's not going to come. And the other thing, the other thing too, is that a lot of times we don't know the impact that we're having. If we send an email, a newsletter, a letter, and affirm them, tell them how great they are, um, give them one idea they can do at home, you, we might think that nobody's doing anything, that they're not doing anything at home. We don't know how many people did take that idea and use it at home. Okay, um, from that same person is they've surveyed, invited, encouraged parents, and then by extension their children are not interested. And it, you mentioned what, you just have to keep plugging away at that. And then finally, um, how do we get parents to register their children for faith formation years besides second and tenth grade when we have sacraments? We have very, very interesting uh, groundbreaking programs. We've been asked to write a book about them, in fact, so they really are missing out. Again, I, th I think that um, that's, that's today's reality, unfortunately, for, for some people. I think we need to keep doing what we believe in and offering it in ways that that meet their needs, and hopefully in time, um, it will help them. Um, Jesus didn't, um, a lot of people didn't come to Jesus either, who, um, who Jesus was inviting, but he never gave up working with those that were there. And, and again, sometimes I think we don't know um, the impact of all that we're doing happening is happening for people in the service. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Sister Parton. That's, okay. That's okay. Okay, and then, uh, and I think I know the answer to this one, having taught this age level, the answer is send, you need to send them home, but do I need to send mail, or can I count on the ch middle school, high school kids to take the notes home? Probably <laughs> you need to send an email, having taught right. that level. That's part of it. That was the reality years ago. But nowadays, too, a lot of people, it's what I said before about communicating. I think mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to use all kinds of communication. Because even email, some parents don't open email. And so we're, we need to do other things. We need to, you know, um, um, send messages, text messages. We need to use Facebook. We need to, we need to find the ways, all of the ways to reach them. Um, because not everybody is going to respond to one thing. But, but the reality is that you're right, that a lot of paper that we send home does, never gets there. OK, well, I think I have two more, and then I'll just read them. Uh, I can read both of them. First one, some ref home reflections for parents, and the next week, family reflect send home reflections for parents, and the next week, family reflections do together uh, it's the folder name. Do together is the folder name. We tried a family activity. We attended Feed My Starving Children and through pictures and word of mouth on how nice it felt to help others. The activity grows each year. Positive comments and how many children or family has helped us is nice. Is put in the bulletin and encourage others to join. Uh, in re this is another one. In response to question, the question just asked, our parish adopted a policy that the child must have registered and participated 
in one year of faith formation prior to second grade, and our confirmation program is a three-year program. Uh, and then finally, brag. Oh no, there's lots more here. Um, Judy, Judy, could yes. we? It's important. Hold them. Could we hold them? Because I don't. Sure. Want, um, we can come back to them. Um, I just don't want to hold up anybody that needs to. Certainly. Too. Okay. All right. Fine. Go right ahead. Thanks, Judy. You're welcome. So let's look at the third um, section, which really overlaps with the two sections we just talked about. But some ideas about virtual learning. Many people tend to think that learning happens only when um, when we provide input, when when people sit and listen to us uh, face to face. So we know today the power of technology. So how can we engage parents um, through technology? So let's look at some ideas. Um, this idea that I'm going to share with you right now is really combination. Sister, and just make sure you're near the mic because you weren't coming through there. OK. Thanks, Judy. This idea is a combination of face-to-face -face and virtual. Um, I know a parish who did this. It was for their baptismal prep program. But think about how we could use it for other sacraments or for any topic for parents. So what they did is they invited parents and godparents to be part of an online group for four to five weeks. So they read, read articles, they watched short videos on the sacrament of baptism, on Christian parenting. The staff, the baptismal prep staff was with them. They suggested questions and invited the adults to respond with their thoughts and experiences on the discussion boards. And then, near the celebration of the sacrament, they came together for a face-to-face -face gathering. And the people who planned this said that they walked in, and even though they had never talked to one another, seen one, they had talked to one another online, they had never seen one another, they responded to each other as friends. They were they were so engaged they couldn't um, they couldn't hardly get a word in edgewise. So how could we do that with other sacraments? How could we put families into small groups, maybe eight nine families in a group? Could we also do follow up with parents in this way after a sacrament? Is engage them in an online continuing conversation. Another thing is to use your parish website. And I think someone mentioned this earlier. Have a Catholic parents board, a place where you can post a question or a thought, and parents can exchange their answers and ideas. Build part of your website which contains formation for parents. This is a parish um, that has pre-liturgy talks every Sunday for adults. And they're all archived so that adults, parents, can view them later. So, so do something like that so parents can learn on their own at home. This is part of a website um, um, from St. Bede Parish in Williamsburg. Notice down at the bottom there's four sections at the bottom of the page. When you click any one of those, they're very short, but there's helpful readings there. So for instance, here's one on God-given ways to cope with fear. So they're simple, short things for parents, for adults to read, to reflect on, on their own. So also build part of your parish website, which contains information for parents and things that families can do together. This site. Um, is one that was developed um, by one of our catechetical leaders. And again, the URLs for these sites are on the handout that you're going to get. This site is from an Episcopal church, but it offers fun and practical ways for families at home to stay in touch with the church, but to, to do things at home. And we can do the same thing on our websites. This one is from a Methodist church. The site contains lots of education, lots of formation, such as there's a page on the liturgical year. 
a favorite part of this, which a lot of people use, is the section called Part Chats. It's a short set of questions for families to use while they're driving in the car. Okay. So another thing I think we could do is to alert parents to other websites that will help them. Websites for themselves as adults growing in the faith, and then websites for themselves in their, their role as parents. So let's look at that first, their role as parents. So there's certainly the Sadlier website, which has a section for parents and families. And here's one of the family pages under Catholic Identity on the care for creation. So there's a short reflection. There's family activities. Another website is Vibrant Faith at Home. This is filled with free resources for families for things to do at home, ways to pray, all kinds of activities of things that they can do at home. Boys Town gives lots of resources, articles, tips about parenting, especially Catholic parenting in today's world. Catholic Mom has a lot of articles. It has a book club. It has activities for the Sunday Gospels. And there's a weekly podcast. Sticky Faith Parents is designed for parents who are concerned about how faith is shaping their children's life and how well it will stick, how well, well it will last. So again, there's lots of resources there that families can use. At Home With Our Faith has essays, media reviews, blogs, book reviews, lots and lots and lots of links, electronic newsletters, and more things for families to use at home. And those are just a few of what's out there. There's lots more. So let's now look at some websites just for themselves as adults that don't necessarily talk about parenting and ideas of things to do at home, but things to help parents, help them to grow in faith as adults. There's um, Bread for Today, which is a very simple reflection and prayer for each day of the year. Stay Great is, is fantastic. There's quotes, there's stories, there's prayers, there's way to live, ways to live. It's built on the idea, um, God made you great, stay great. Busted Halo is a website that's designed for young adults which is where many of our parents are today that we're, we're ministering to. So again, it has lots of ideas and resources for, for adults, for parents. E-Catholicism is a collection of a lot of resources about our faith today. So when they go there, they can find all kinds of things that they might be interested in or they might want to continue to learn more about based upon what their children are learning about too. So are there ways that you've used technology to support parents, to educate parents? And while they're typing, maybe Judy you can give us can you give us a couple more ideas from the last section? Yes, and some of them put that in. Somebody mentioned brag boards with photos of after sessions and in newsletters, bulletins, so that people can see what they've missed exactly. and maybe entice, be enticed to participate in the next event. And then somebody wants to try an outdoor activity and bring a prayer of thanks for the time we had and have a few prayers with the phrase, when two or more are gathered, there so am I. When I am there. And then um, our parish has started the use of a new Remind app that schools are using to get the message to parents. Good. OK. Uh, somebody very kindly typed that our resources are awesome. So <laughs> that was very nice. Thank very you, Barb. Uh, <laughs> they, um, and uh, yeah, somebody, um, just so everybody knows, this is Sister's PowerPoint. So no, you won't have access to all these slides. Um, 
but uh, she does have a list of all the websites that she has mentioned, and that will be sent to you in the thank you. Okay. Right. All right, let's see here. Um, what was the last, okay, all of those websites that Sister mentioned are going to be on the list that you receive. Right. Okay. Um, we set up Facebook groups for Sacramento formation grades. Great. Okay. Um, let's see. Facebook now has Flocknote, a way to communicate through email and text, and you can send things through them. Okay. Right. right. Everybody's thanking you for the websites. And, oh, several of my parents don't speak English, and some don't have tech access, and that, that does happen in many places. That's right. That's right. And that's everything, sister. Okay. All right. Wonderful sites to use for my parents. Thank you so much. Good. And there's that's just a very small um, listing of them. There's there's wonderful ones out there. There's also other ones that we'd want to avoid, but there's great ones out there. And so the idea too is not to not to think they always have to come to us. That we can share those kind of resources with them. And, and many of those resources are so are very very short, and and a lot of parents would be grateful to know about those. They don't have the time to go and find them, and so if our part of our role is is helping them by by giving them to them. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Judy, and thank you everybody for your ideas. Your ideas are phenomenal. You're doing a great job. Um, so just keep deepening that and, and knowing that it's bearing fruit, whether sometimes you feel like it isn't or not. It is. Um, they, know, they know of your faith. They know of your enthusiasm. They know of your dedication to them and that you're there um, when they need you, especially in the difficult times. And you let them know that. So thank you. And one just final comment, Sister. Somebody mentioned here at our Catholic school, each grade organizes a monthly school mass. Instead of having the children be the only participants, um, they uh, plan with the, instead of having the children be the only participants with the planning of the mass, they allow parents to participate as well. They join the child with hospitality, uh, and being greeters, join in presenting the readings, and doing the presentation of the gifts. That's so, wonderful. That's wonderful. It is wonderful. Yes. So on behalf of Sadler, I'd like to thank Sister Janet for a wonderful presentation and for all of you for your interaction. And as a reminder, the webinar will be posted in the next few days and it will be under um, the webinar site with Teach, under the Teach. And thanks to all of you for attending today and have a wonderful week. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.